fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Maggie Carroll was a rough and tough frontier woman. She owned the biggest ranch in the territory just outside of the town of Redford. But she spent practically all of her time running the Silver Bar Cafe in town, which she also owned. Everyone respected Aggie as a fair dealer, and they also respected the two guns that sagged in the gun belt around her hips. Aggie Carroll asked neither help nor protection from any man. Even at the cafe, she handled any unpleasant situation in her own way. Hey, you. I want some service, do you hear? I heard you. Got her the two way down first, mister. Look, if you know it's good for you, you'll wait on me right now, Savvy. Hold your horses. I'll wait on you when I get ready. Wait on me now. My thunder, if you don't, out. Just what is it you're gonna do, Buster? Huh? Who are you? I happen to own this place, and no Bronco Buster like you is gonna come in here and act tough. Savvy? Ah, yeah. That's killing him, Maggie. Give him the game. Ah, uh, go get your knitting and sit down. No ornery female's gonna talk me down. Ornery female, huh? I'll have you know I'm a lady, so this'll teach you some manners. Oh, oh. 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 Man alive, what a shock. Yeah, he still has a surprised look on his face. Yeah. All right, <laughs> now, a couple of you boys drag that bragging coyote out of here. Sure, we'll take him out. He'll wake up in the gutter. Yeah. Hank, Dave, yeah. come into my office. Take his feet. Yeah. I got something I want to talk over with you. All right, Eddie. Uh, we'll be right in. Come on right now. You don't want to keep a lady waiting, do you? <laughs> we sure don't, Eddie. Leastwise, not you, anyhow. Let's go, Dave. Come on. Right. Come on. Go on in, boys. Now make yourselves comfortable. Better for you to be sitting down when you hear what I have to tell you anyhow. <laughs> Must be mighty interesting. Yeah. What's it all about, eh? Just this, Dave. Starting the end of this week, you and Hank are going to run this place by yourselves well, for about a month. Eh? Why? Are you planning to take a trip? Nope. I, uh, I'm going out to live at the ranch. Well, it's something wrong out there. I thought Pete was running things pretty well. He is. Pete's the best foreman in the territory. Well, then why are you... Give me a chance to talk and I'll come to the point. Well, go ahead. We're listening. Uh, look, I'm 45 years old and I've been here in the West since I was 20. Folks don't know much about the past and one thing they don't know is... I'm a widow. Honest? Well, I, 
I didn't think you'd ever be married. <laughs> Thought no hombre would ever hook up with me, huh? Oh, no, no, no. I... Well, let me tell you. My husband, William Carroll, was as fine an hombre as you could ever meet up with. Quiet, gentleman-like, but underneath he was tough as nails. Yes. We married in St. Louis and then came out here and set up the ranch and built this cafe. And they both prospered. Yeah. Three years after we got here, he was killed in a holdup. Gosh, that's sure something. I was well brought up, but... Losing Bill made me bitter, and I vowed to stay here and lick this country by being just as tough as the next one. Yeah. Yeah, you sure did uh, all right, Aggie. Thanks. Now, here's the news I brought you into here. I had a son, little Bill. You, you, you had a son? Yep. When he was five, I sent him back to St. Louis to live with my husband's people. I was determined my boy wasn't going to grow up in this tough country and maybe wind up like... Like his dad did, six feet under. Yeah. I wanted him to be a real gentleman, to grow up and study law. Well, what happened to your son, Bill? He grew up like I wanted him to, Dave. Now he's 22, just finished his schooling, and before he starts reading law, he he decided to come out here and visit his ma, meaning me. Well, what do you know? I've kept him well supplied with money, and he thinks I'm quite a lady. Gentle, educated, and all that. <laughs> He's sure in for a letdown. <laughs> Shut up, you bold naked maverick. I'm sorry, Aggie. <laughs> yeah. I got to admit, though, I got a shock when I heard he was coming. Yeah. Regardless of me writing that he shouldn't. Uh, going to stay a month, you say? Yep. And for that month, he's going to find me to be what he expects. I'm going to try to act like a lady while he's here if it kills me. Yeah. Holy mackerel. You sure will have to go tell him the fooling, Maggie. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. I'll make out somehow. I don't want him to know about this place for one thing. No. And I'm having Mrs. Drew, the dressmaker, fix up some fancy clothes for me to wear. You'll have a dog going. Of course, I'll have to talk sort of general I do. Yeah. Well, I can do it if I just don't get riled up about something. When'd you get here? Saturday. I'll meet him. Pete will drive me into town in the buckboard. <laughs> It'll be the first time you ever sat back and let someone else do the driving. Yeah, <laughs> but real ladies don't do their own driving back in St. Louis, Dave. Now, you boys tip off everybody so no one will make a slip in front of Bill if we happen to come to town. We will, yeah, sure. It'll be an awful long month for me, I reckon, but I'll sure be glad to see that boy of mine. You know, I... I can't imagine a boy yours not being rough and tough, Aggie. Well, you got a chance to see him as I want him to be. A real gentleman. Yeah. Now get out front and run things. I'm going to the dressmaker. The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, had been camping in the hills outside of Redford for about two weeks. On Saturday, Tonto, who had gone to town for supplies, returned to the camp. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Oh, hello. Any news in town? Oh. Well, me see something funny, Kimasabi. Oh? What was that? Well, you know a woman who run cafe. Aggie Carroll? Ah. Oh, yes. Everybody around here knows her. But in spite of her rough manners, she's well respected. <laughs> well, you listen, and me tell you about when stage come in. Me stand in crowd and watch. Notice lady get out a buckboard in fancy dress and carrying lace parasol. Oh, uh, oh, oh. Stage just got in, Pete. Oh, Tom, sawing these high button shoes. <laughs> Help me down from this seat before I fall flat on my face, Pete. Yes, ma'am. Balancing this crazy parasol isn't any cinch either. Hmm. All right. I, I can manage now. Come on. Look, Pete. Mm. That must be him. Just got out of the coach. Yeah. Now on, I gotta really watch my step. Oh, here comes your mother now, Mr. Gal. William! William, it's so good to see you. Hello, Mother. Oh, golly. You're just like I thought you'd be. Sort of sweet and pretty and well. Helpless. Pete <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Oh, uh, William, this is Pete, my ranch foreman. Uh, Pete, this is my son. Howdy. Glad to meet you, Pete. 
I'm certainly glad Mother has someone like you around to look after things for her. Yeah. Yes, me, I'd say she Oh, well, you're the man from the cafe, aren't you? Right. It was nice of you to meet the stage. Uh, don't let us keep you from your work any longer. Well, I was... Uh, uh, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Be seeing you again, Mr. Cal. Adios, dear. Uh, now, William, you come with me to the buckboard. Pete will look after your luggage. Yes, ma'am. I'm looking forward to a wonderful month having you with me at the ranch. Shall we go? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem possible that was really Aggie Carroll, Tom. <laughs> well, me asked some questions in town. And feller that get off stage really her son. Him nice looking young feller. Her want him think her lady and live at ranch all time. It'll take a lot of acting on Aggie's part. She may be making a mistake by not being natural. Mm, that's right. Sooner or later, Aggie's going to revert to type. Ah, then son get heap surprised. <laughs> It'll be interesting to find out what his reaction will be when it happens, Toto. Yeah, very interesting. That same afternoon, the man whom Aggie had put out of the cafe a few days before reigned to a stop in front of a cabin hidden in the hills. Oh, oh there. Oh, oh boy. Easy. Uh, hi, Jeff. You look like you got something on your mind. I have, Duke. I just come from town. I saw the stage come in. Well, what's so exciting about that? Look, remember me telling you about that tough woman who socked me at the cafe? <laughs> yeah, I remember. Some tough hombre you turned out to be. Ah, stop <laughs> ragging me about it. You know as well as I do, she has a reputation for being plenty tough. Yeah, we both know it now, but you should have found it out before you went there and argued with her. What about her? I found out she's putting on an act. An act? What do you mean? She has a tenderfoot son. He come to visit her for a month. They haven't met for years. She wants him to think she's a real lady. <laughs> <laughs> Think that over for a while. You're trying to be a lady is her headache. I don't see what it has to do with us. And I'll tell you, I swore to get back at her for making a fool of me the other day. Well, how are you going to do that? Listen, I found out she don't want that son of hers to know she has anything to do with the cafe. She's staying away from it while he's here and tipped everybody off to keep quiet about her owning it. Well? Tonight we could bust into the office there after hours. They take in a lot, what with a gaming room and all, and it's left in the safe there. Yeah, but I... Don't just... you see? She won't be around as she usually was. And she'll try to keep it quiet so her tenderfoot son won't get wise that she owns it. And the men at the cafe will be sort of lost without her to tell him what to do and all. Ordinarily, she'd lead a posse herself and try to track us down, but she won't dare. And the sheriff's away. Hey, maybe your idea isn't so bad at that. I think it'll work. And we'll get away with a good haul, too. How about it? Sure, it's all right with me. <laughs> yeah, I can see her now when she hears about the robbery and can't do anything about it personally. <laughs> it's a smart idea, Jeff. Plenty smart. Late that night after closing the cafe, Hank and Dave were in the room they shared together upstairs in the building. They were preparing for bed when they were startled by a muffled explosion. Hey, did you hear that? Yeah. Sounded like it came from the office downstairs. Come on. Yep. Have your gun handy. Look. Hey. Someone blew the safe, Hank. It's cleaned out. Holy smoke. Aggie will have a fit. Hey, say, there they are out back. Come on. They got away. Now what do we do, Hank? Hey, hey, what happened? Who are you shooting at? Well, a couple of outlaws stole the cash from the safe. Hey. Come on, get your horses, everybody. We'll try to trail them before they get too far away. We got moonlight to help us. Hurry it up. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. At their camp, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were rolled in their blankets asleep. A short time before, Tonto had been awakened by the sound of fast hoofbeats passing on the trail a short distance away. He sat up and watched as two horsemen faded into the distance. Half an hour later, he sat up again, listening. Then he reached out and touched the Lone Ranger. Kimasabe, uh, uh, Kimasabe. What, what is it, Tonto? Me hear hoofbeats. Many horses coming. Oh. A while ago, me see two men ride fast along trail. Maybe a posse coming. I don't hear them yet. You listen close. Oh, yes. Now I hear them. Let's saddle the horses just in case. Uh, yeah. Easy, Silver. <coughs> There's a posse. They'll be looking things over carefully. Yeah. They might notice our camp. Is it a big fella? Easy now. There. Uh, no. Scout be ready as soon as we tighten cinch. Damn. I see them now, Tonto. I think it is a posse. Ah. Look, them coming into camp. What we do? Hey, there they are, man. Let's leave, Tonto, quick. No time for explanations right now. Easy, big fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, Scott. Get him up, Tonto. Easy, Scott. When Hank and Dave with a posse turned in toward the Lone Ranger's camp, the masked man decided that it was better to make a getaway rather than try to explain his mask to a group of angry men. The posse started in pursuit, but after a few miles, Hank called a halt. Hold it! Hold, hold, hold. That is no use, men. They're giving us a slip. Yeah, but they were the outlaws, all right. That hombre on the white stallion was wearing a mask. The moon was bright enough for me to see it. Now what, Hank? Are we just going to give up? Baggy was with us. She'd know what to do. Well... The only thing I know of is for me to go to the ranch and tell Aggie what happened. Yeah, all right, then. Let's go back to town. Then you can go out and talk to Aggie. It'll be morning by that time. Well, let's get going, man. Get up there. Early that morning, Aggie, wearing a tight-waisted silk dress, entered the main room of the ranch house. She went to the door of Bill's room and knocked. William? William? Yes, Mother? Breakfast is ready. I'm waiting for you. I'll be there in a minute. All right. Who can that be? Sounded like Hank, but I told him to stay away. Aggie, I had to come Shut to you. Shut up, you crazy galoot. I'll come on the porch. Yeah. Now, what's the idea you're coming out here when I told you not to? Now listen, Aggie. Two outlaws robbed the office safe. What? Got away with nigh on to $8,000. Why, the dirty, low-down coyotes. Did you get a posse? Sure. We trailed them to their camp in the hills. But they saw us coming and got away. One was masked and rode a big white stallion. The other was an Indian. You mean you actually caught up with them and let them give you the slip? Yeah, but... By thunder, you men act like a bunch of ornery tunderfeet. But Aggie... Don't I... but Aggie me. I'd have kept after him until I got him, and you know it. Well, I know, but... Of all the gall darned us feather-headed... Uh, 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 <coughs> something wrong, Mother? Thought I heard some uh, rough talking in here. Oh, William, uh, you remember Hank, don't yeah. you? Uh, yes, you said he runs a cafe. But why has he come here? Oh, well, you see, William... Uh, the cafe safe was robbed last night, and Hank has yeah. came to, uh, well, to get some of my ranch hands to, to ride in a posse. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, I've never seen a posse in action. Uh, maybe I could go along with him, Mother. Oh, no, William. You have to be used to hard riding and know how to handle a gun. Outlaws out here are usually desperate men. Yes, that's right. You, you see, if I have your permission, ma'am, I'll... Uh, Go to the bunkhouse now and get some of your men. Yes, yes, of course. Thanks a lot, ma'am. <laughs> Come inside, William. We'll have breakfast, then I suggest you get a, a gentle horse from the corral and ride over the ranch. I'll take my morning nap while you're gone. Oh, all right, Mother, if you say so. <laughs> Shall we go in now? <laughs> After a hasty breakfast, Bill went out to the corral, and Aggie watched furtively from the window until she saw him ride off behind the barn. Then going to her room, she rapidly exchanged the tight-fitting dress and high-button shoes 
for her usual buckskin blouse, skirt, and boots. Then, strapping on her gun belt, she strode from the house toward the corral, where the foreman was saddling a horse. Hi, Aggie. I knew as soon as your son rode away, you'd be coming out for your horse. Hank told me what happened. I'll take the boys and hunt down those sidewinding outlaws, or my name isn't Aggie Carroll. I'm here to tell you, Pete, just 24 hours of trying to act like a genteel lady has just about got me floored. I guess that son of yours would get a shock if he could see and hear you now. Hank and the men are ready to go when you are. Yeah, you? I see him in front of the bunkhouse. Easy, steady. Get your horse and come on. All right. Get up. Steady. Get up there. Come on, boys. Fall in behind and let's get those ornery sneaking coyotes. Get up there. Get up there. Meantime, Bill rode for some distance across the vast rangeland, and coming to a trail, began to follow it. As he rounded a bend, he came face to face with the two outlaws, Jeff and Duke. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, you, we got you covered. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Say, what is this? Hey, Duke, he's the tenderfoot that came to visit that Carol woman. He's the son. Well, you don't say. Hey, that gives me an idea, Jeff. Yeah, what? Maybe we can get more money from her if we take him to the cabin and keep him there a while. Say, that's a good idea. <laughs> now, wait a minute. If I had a gun, you wouldn't... <laughs> talk... You wouldn't know how to use it, mister. Now, get going. Go on and make it quick. Hit him. Get him. Get him. That morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had circled back to the trail near their camp. There, they picked up the tracks of the two men who had ridden past just before the posse had arrived. The two riders who passed the camp earlier must have been the ones the posse was after, Toto. Ah, and that trail plenty clear. But posse not come this far and turn off and chase us. Yes. Away, Toto. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 why we stopped him, Mr. Look, off to the left. Down in that hollow. Ah, we see it now. It old prospector's cabin. Tracks leave trail here. Look like them go down that way. Right. That's where they must be hiding out. We'll leave the horses over there in the arroyo. Then we'll approach the cabin on foot. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Inside the cabin, Bill Carroll sat on a bunk while Jeff lounged nearby holding a gun. Duke was at a table with pencil and paper printing a note. Yeah, as soon as I get this note finished, we'll make him sign it. Then we'll tie him up, Jeff. I know a half-breed we can get to leave it at the cafe. I won't sign anything. That's final. Yeah, it talks big for a tenderfoot. In a minute, we'll... Hey, Duke, what's the matter? What are you staring out the window for? I just happened to get a glimpse of a tall masked hombre as he sneaked from one bush to another out there. <laughs> tall masked man, you say? Yeah, and I've seen that hombre before this, Duke. He's on the side of the law. The lone ranger? Yeah, and that means he isn't alone. Get over near the door, Duke. I'll aim right into those bushes and let him hail it. In their concern over the presence of the masked man outside, Jeff and Duke momentarily forgot about Bill Carroll. Duke walked toward the door as Jeff, with his back to Bill, raised his gun to shoot through the window. Suddenly, Bill sprang into action. I won't let you shoot the babe. Are well, you crazy, tenderfoot? No, I'll take this gun. Do plug this cab before he gets my gun. I'll yeah, plug him all right. No, no, no. this will fix you, you dirty crook. No. Kimasabi, that young fella come to visit Carol woman. You shoot through window just in time. Yes, Tonto. I understood you were a tenderfoot, Carol, but well, on the... Well, both of you. If you don't, hey. I'll... Yes, you son. Hold everything, Mom. The masked man and the Indian are friends. These other two are the crooks. William, I... <laughs> you can't put on your act in those clothes and with those guns in your hands, um, Mom. What? You mean you caught on, Bill? <laughs> well, not immediately, but it didn't take long. I'm mighty sorry, son, but... You see, this is the way I am, and I guess I just can't change. <laughs> well, I was expecting you to be the way you tried to be. But I was hoping that you'd really be real and natural. <laughs> I can drop that mother stuff now and call you mom like I want to. And, uh, please don't ever call me William again. <laughs> well, what do you know? Bill isn't a tenderfoot, either. 
He jumped one of these crooks and overpowered him just as I got here. You mean Bill did that? You see, I don't want to read law, Mom. I want to be a rancher. I want to stay here. Had lessons in boxing, shooting, riding. I was trying to be what you expect to be. What do you know? Take after your dad. Gonna be one of them quiet kind that tough as nails. And I'm sure glad. You can sell the cafe. You can let Hank and Dave continue to run it. Mm. So you knew about that, too, huh? <laughs> I heard you talking to the foreman this morning. Let's be ourselves, shall we, Mom? Bill, those are the sweetest words I've heard since you came here. Looks like I win my point after all. Meaning that you're pleased with the more you came to stay with. Bill, you and the men can handle these crooks. Come on, fellow. Uh, how do you? Bye, mister. And thanks. Say, those are the ones we was chasing last night. Yeah, and they turn out to be friends. Yeah, we... Who are the Bill, you know? One of these crooks said that the masked man's on the side of the law. He's known as the Lone Ranger. Well, what do you know? Great day. I'm sure glad he didn't catch Aggie Carroll in high button shoes and a tight silk dress and carrying a lace parasol. (laughs) (laughs) He's the type of Andre who likes people as they really are. Yep, I'd have to go a long way to fool the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 